Hey everybody, we're down in the grow room today, uh, just making a quick short video, uh, show you guys what I've been working on indoors as well. It's, the weather's so changeable outside. Um, and also probably a couple words about seeds. Uh, what I have in here, these are my leeks, my scallions, and some chives. Um, we use heirloom seed because we can harvest seed and regrow it. So um, the chives right here, I, I wasn't sure because I wasn't sure how old the seed was. Looks like I'm gonna get a couple, maybe even a few more once um, once the rest of it starts growing. These are these have only been in the ground since uh, February 20th. So it's only been it's less than two weeks. So, um, over here, let's take a look. These are scallions. Um, the scallions came from our food co op. They carry three different brands of seed the Hudson Valley Seed Company, otherwise known as the Seed Library, although that's a misnomer because they aren't a seed library, they are a seed seller. Um, if you want more information on seed libraries, you should look up seed swaps and see what's available in your area. Um, what I did is the, the rest of these are going to be leeks and they're, I planted leeks, a couple different kinds of leeks, scallions, chives, and some of these are my own seed that I saved from previous years and others are, uh, things I bought. The other uh, brands that our co-op carries are high mowing seeds, which are heirloom seeds, and Renee's seed, which isn't always, uh, some of them say they're an F1 variety, which means they've been hybridized and you won't get true plantings from them. Okay, over here, these are high mowing seeds. These are collard greens. These are something that are a cold weather plant. So, these will be going outside before the end of our um, last frost. And I'm going to move a light so it might get kind of wonky here. On the other side, I have uh, baby spinach, which is Renee's seed. And these are yellow onions. Um, not sure which seed package I picked up for these. Our co-op uh, carries those three, but I also buy from the Michigan Gardener, and I always try and make sure they're heirloom. And Michigan Gardener um, has what I call affordable seed packs. They're not fancy. Um, the prominent price of a seed pack is the cost of packaging it, the pretty packaging that you see. And so if you get something that's in a plain white envelope, generally it's cheaper. This is my Napa cabbage. Um, this probably came from Whole Foods. Whole Foods carries botanical interests. And I think the Napa is a botanical interest. And I actually have a sheet that tells me what all I planted. What I'm seeing here, I have two empty rows. That was Swiss chard. That was a rainbow chard that I picked up. It didn't germinate. And then the ones on the end here, they're getting kind of leggy. I need to switch. I try and rotate these every day so that no matter what, something is under as much direct light and as close to the lighting source as possible. You'll notice I have these up on flipped over trays. That one's stuck. But you can see what that is. That that's just a a heavy duty tray. And those I had to order from Johnny's seed. Um, again, this year Johnny's is expecting a rush and only sells periodically to the public right now. Um, these guys here are lettuce. In another week, I'll be transplanting those into bigger containers. Uh, they're going to go into something like this. I save old milk cartons. I wash them out really good. This is going to be for my Napa cabbage. You can see I've already got my 
plastic spoon collection labeled always label your plants you might not remember what you put in I sure as heck don't um, okay so over here this is new for me I have two different kinds of bulb fennel we noticed in the store that bulb fennel was incredibly expensive so if you're gonna plant something to get the maximum monetary benefit, if that is why you're growing, that isn't always everybody's, um, you know, priority. But um, I noticed they were very, very expensive. So a pack of seeds, I've got two different kinds in here. Um, the ones closest to me are from the Michigan Gardener and the ones that are really big and exuberant, those are from Renee's Garden. And beyond that, I've got my red cabbage and I've got an assortment of things growing. There's supposed to be celery in here, and it's it's still fairly small yet, so I have to look which rows are actually celery. There's a few other things in here that are really small, and I'm not quite sure if those are weeds that germinated in my uh, soil mix, because I did use compost from the garden, or if I spilled some seed while I was planting. That, that does happen. And lettuce, my goal this year is to plant every three weeks. So it is just about time when I transplant these guys to plant another batch. Um, and then I save my old sticks from last year and those are written in pencil so those can just be erased and new things written on the, the seed mark or the um, plant markers. But um, I did a couple of stints giving out free samples of food before COVID hit, and I have huge bags full of plastic spoons. Otherwise, I wouldn't use plastic in my garden, but it's what I've got. So you can see these are the kinds of lights that are preferred. Um, if they get wet, they're not going to electrocute you. The one closest to us is in the red range. I've, they're ten, they tend to be a couple bucks more expensive. Uh, red is for flowering plants and the one in the back is a blue light and that's just for greens um, so the blue light will work just fine for germinating um, the red light I just picked it up because it was easier on my eyes I really don't care for the really really bright lights so that's what I've got going on today um, I need to plant a couple more and I probably need to pick up some more lights from the store if the store still has any. Um, and then once I plant my tomatoes, I've got some heating mats down here that um, I'll be using underneath tomatoes. And there's another one, I'm trying to flatten it out. I just got that one. Um, I also put in marigolds and they definitely need a heating pad. And down here, I keep my handy dandy thermometer. It has been 59 degrees all winter down here. Humidity is currently at 45%. I do run a dehumidifier, but it, it hasn't had much work to do this year. It's been fairly dry down here. Don't use these guys unless they're on top. These guys will electrocute you and they will short out if they get wet. So they're dangerous, don't use them. Um, this is uh, this is giant spinach down here that I planted and it's not up yet, it just got planted this week. So there you have it from the grow room. Happy growing. <laughs>